Okay, in this second part for arrays, we are going to be looking at how to update values inside an array. Now, um, this might seem a very simple skill, but it's one that I've noticed that students do find very difficult because you have to think about in updating individual values rather than updating entire uh, arrays, which is a, a different shift in paradigm, isn't it? So um, we're going to take a, a slow look at how that works. So hopefully this will make it a bit easier when you come to use arrays for real. So here we've got some example code. So I've got some names of uh, of some people, and I am changing the name of the first person. So Diana is being changed to Cameron. Okay. Now how does that work? Well, notice that on uh, line two we have name zero. So we've got an index there. So I'm not trying to update the entire array. So I'm not changing everybody to be Cameron because that'd be just a bit weird. Uh, I'm just changing a single index. I'm just saying one value. Okay, so you must always supply an index, and that uh, is for me a golden rule. Okay, so whenever you're using uh, arrays, you always, always, always supply an index because you're always focusing it in on a single value at a time. So uh, index zero is Diana. Okay, it's got the value of Diana, and then I use assignment to make the change. So with a normal variable, I would use uh, assignment to change it, and um, the same goes for arrays. It, it's actually no different. So I use assignment to change the uh, individual value of um, of index zero, and then when I print this out, I'll get um, uh, Cameron and then Karina. So we've already seen how to access values in arrays. So um, here I've got an array called numbers, and um, the line here says print number zero. Um, that's going to print out just a single value. So when we have an array, it is made up of multiple values. And whenever we want to use an array, we need to specify a single position in the array um, known as an index. So if I run this code, it should uh, print out 10. And there we go. The reason why is because it's zero index. So we've got zero, one, two, and so on and so forth. So in position zero, we have the value of 10. Now, when we think about updating um, a value inside the array or changing a value inside the array, we've got to uh, remember how we change values in a variable full stop, okay? So here we've got some really simple code which shouldn't be uh, too much of a mystery to you. So here I'm setting a variable called variable, uh, it might be titled, I know, uh, called 80, with, sorry, with the value of 80, and then I'm changing immediately the value to be 20. So when I run this code, you can see it's going to print out the value of 20, and the reason for that is because first it has a value of 80, then the next line it's changed to 20, and then the print happens after the change has occurred, ergo it will display 20. So remember this little equal sign in uh, Python is known as assignment and assign will take whatever's on the right hand side and basically store it in the um, variable on the left. So here I've got another one. So remember numbers is our array up here. Okay, so that's already been defined. And then I have this value here. Now imagine I want to change a value in the array. Now this code will not work properly. So when I run it, you can see it prints out the array first and then suddenly just prints out the value five. Now why is that? Because my array has now been overwritten, it's gone. Okay, it's been destroyed and it's been replaced with the integer five. What's happened is, well, numbers was originally an array. We then put um, the value of five into it. And now when we print out numbers, we just get the value five. So that's not updated the array, it's basically overwritten it. It's basically got rid of it. So that's not how you'll change a value in the array. To change a value in the array, you have to remember the index. So the exact same way when we were uh, kind of printing or accessing a single element in the array like this, we need to do the same thing when we're assigning. So let's have a look at that. So here we've got some code, um, and I'm gonna run it straight off the bat. So you see here, it looks like I've um, basically done the same thing, but it's actually really, really different. So here, I have my array, and I'm printing out the value of zero. Okay, I've just noticed I've made a mistake here. I'm gonna run, change that and run it again. 
So um, I know that looks like I've got the same output, but it's not. I'll say why in a second. Uh, anyway, so I'm printing out index zero, so you print out the 10, which is why I've got 10 here. I then change index zero to be the value of five. So this 10 has been changed with a value of five. I then print it out. Remember, I'm using the same index, which is why I get the value of five. Now, when I had a five there, and it still outputted the value of five, the reason for that is because the index five happens to be the number five. Okay, that was just coincidence, um, which probably wasn't very helpful. Anyway, let's see what happens when we just print numbers out. As you can see, I have my array still. Okay, the array is still intact. Okay, in the example up here, that was not the case, was it? So my array is still intact, but Lotus, the first index, index zero, has now got a new value of five. So the golden rule, whenever we want to access an item in the array or want to update or change a value in the array, I must always supply an index. That is this super key, key point. So let's have a, another look at updating value in the array. So um, I've started off with the same array I had last time. So um, that's uh, got a set of numbers in there. I'm just printing up the first index. Now, when we update an, a variable, we may not want to just overwrite it with a completely new value. We may wish to take another variable, even the same variable, and update the value. So this code here, again, this shouldn't be too much of a surprise um, to, uh, to you, but um, if I run this code, we should get the value of 11. Now, what's happened? Well, I first of all put the value of 10 into the uh, variable x. I take the value of x and add one to it. Okay, so x has a value of 10. I add one to 10 becomes 11, and then I assign the value 11 to x. What's happened in Python is it's uh, basically evaluated, run this code, got the value of it and place that in. Now, formally, this is known as an expression, okay? An expression is a bit of code that when evaluated, when run, will give you a one value, okay? That's a bit more technical way of describing it, but essentially, um, you can think of it this way. It runs the code on the right, shoves the value in the left. So, let's have a look at how this impacts arrays. And imagine I want to add a, a value as maybe number one to uh, my array. So this bit of code, if I run it, let's see what happens, okay? I get an error. So the error says trace back, um, you can, can only concatenate list, not int to list. So what on earth does that mean? Concatenate means join together, okay? And it says you can join a list to a list. So you can put two lists together to get a new list, um, but you can't add uh, an integer to it. So what it's really saying is, well, you've got the bunch of numbers, which one do you add one to? It doesn't know, okay? It was expecting you to supply another array, another list. Well, okay, let's say we supply a value. So I want um, index zero to have an extra one onto it. So I want um, this value of 10 to be added one to it and become 11. So I've basically specified that now, and then I've got numbers plus one. So let's see what happens now. So again, I get the same error. So why do I get the same error? Um, the reason for that is because, um, again, I am trying to add one to a list, okay, which you can't do. You can't add one to an array. You have to specify the index at all times, okay? Remember the golden rule, always supply an index. So the correct code to actually update a single value inside an array will, using a, a, an existing value would look like this. Okay, notice that I have got my index zero here and also here. So when I run this code, you can see my first index now has the value of 11, which is exactly what we wanted to do. Now, the expression on the uh, right-hand side can be as complicated or as simple as we want it to be. So here I've got another example where I'm taking a number zero uh, plus numbers one. So it's gonna take this 11 and add nine to it to become 20, and it's gonna place that into index three. So zero, one, two, three, it's gonna update this seven with a value of 20. So let's print out numbers just to make sure that works. So let's run that code. Okay, you can see there the seven has been updated with 20 exactly as I predicted. <clears throat> so summarizing this little, um, little bit of code, in order to um, use existing values inside an array,
to update an, uh, another value in the side array, we must always supply an index. Or golden rule, always supply an index when using an array. So in this practice task, as always, um, do have a go at the task and then pause the video, try it, and then you'll have the model answer um, just after this, okay? Now, um, in this task, you have two arrays. You've got names and green stamps. Now, names are the names of students and green stamps are how many green stamps they have. So for example, um, index zero will be Ben and Ben has no green stamps. Sally has no green stamps, Fred has no green stamps, and so on and so forth, okay? So Ben's green stamps are in index zero of the green stamps array. Sally's green stamp total are in index one, okay? So Sally's in index one, her green stamps are index one, okay? So the index is common between the two arrays, okay? So Nils is going to be index three, Fred's going to be two, etc. etc. Now I am fully aware those of you who are really good coders already know that you, this can be done in a million different one different ways um, and much better than I've done it here. But because we're not introduced to the arrays or more advanced features yet, um, this is how we are going to do it. Anyway. What I want you to do is to code something which will ask for the index of students. So it's not asking for the name, it's going to ask for their number, okay, their index. So in the example run here, I've got enter an index and I've entered the value of two. Now that is going to be Fred because Ben zero, Sally's one, and so on and so forth. So Fred's two. Um, and then it has to add one to the value. So at the moment it's zero, it needs to add one to it, it becomes one. Okay, if it had one in there, you add one to it, it becomes zero, obviously. Then it just displays the two rays. So here it's um, as for index two, it's then added one onto Fred's green stamp total and then it's printed out the two rays. Okay, notice that the one has been updated in index two. So we've got zero, one, two. This, this might seem slightly complicated, but it's not. It's really simple code. Um, stop the video, have a real hard think about it. If you're absolutely unsure, um, uh, try it anyway because the thinking is that really, really important. But if you don't know, then um, the answer's on the next slide. So here's the model answer. Obviously, when I do model answers, please don't think this is how your answer must look. If you've done it slightly differently, as long as you've got the same output um, and it works in different scenarios, uh, it will be fine. So um, what I've done is I've used input. Now, because I'm using an index, the index must be an integer value and an int, I have done some casting. So I've cast it to an int first. If you didn't do that cast, you'll get a weird error when you try and use it as an index. Okay, probably something to do with can't uh, use a string or something like that. Then uh, I will then use that index i to update the green stamp total. So I'm changing a value in the green stamp array, which is why I've got green stamps there, not names. I am then taking the green stamps i again. So I'm taking that position and adding one to it. Now, I'm fully aware you could potentially just say green stamps i equals one. However, that won't be correct because what if it didn't have the value of zero? What if it had the value of five in there or whatever? We want to take the existing value and add one to it. Then the prints are really straightforward. We just print names, print green stamps. So hopefully um, that made sense. Uh, if it doesn't, have a good look through this code to see how it is working. Maybe watch this video again and have a go at the tasks that are linked in the YouTube description here or linked on my website.